is going on, guys? Wise here, coming to the recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. Uh, this was our CWL Week 3 matchup against El Conquistador. Uh, awesome war. One of those ones, again, I, I love in the state of the game. I'm really finding um, at least every, almost every war is coming down right to the wire. Um, and that's the best part of this game is those last moments of the war when those last few hits are just, whether it's percentage or just that last star, um, and that, again, was uh, this war delivered. So you, you can see right here, 98.08% was the superior victor to the 97.32%. Uh, was not our best showing so far, um, but wasn't a bad showing by any means. Uh, we actually came out the gate. Our Town Hall 10s were on fire. Um, so we just came out and we freaking gave the one-two punch, uh, had concrete door on the ropes. They came back mid-war, uh, really cleaned up the second half of their 10v10 game, ended up bringing the match right back. 11v11s were basically on par with each other, and it came down to sort of the final moments of the Warriors. So we're just going to check a few things. Now, what sucks for me is I had to work. I um, Quite often, I don't rarely ever close on Fridays. One of my, uh, my other managers off this week. So my schedule was pretty wacky. It's, it's, I have a horrible schedule. I like close, close, over, close, close, just starting from Thursday through the weekend. So pretty crazy for me. That never happens. I really wanted to stream the war and most certainly I wanted to stream more. Let's go right into um, some of the war events here. If we go right down to the beginning. All the way. All right, so we got our Town Hall Mines coming out the gate, so that's uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, our Fearless Leader Waves jumps in with the first 10v10 and nails it on 19. Uh, you're going to see Tanu jumps in. Uh, one of our other co-leaders just rips it up too. Another 10v10 right off the bat, so we're 100% there. Uh, we did end up having Erickson miss that one, but you're going to see Waves again, Notorious jumping in, Notorious again with the six-pack. Um, couple misses there, but the King jumping in, Mixa jumping in. Like, we were just putting up 10v10. King with the six-pack, unbelievable. Warp just misses uh, the 99% there. It was a heartbreaking hit. I think there was one cannon left, and his queen was on the way. It just got stuck by one of those walls and couldn't take it down in time. Uh, and you're going to see, really nice job. Demon getting in there. So beautiful, you know. With beginning of the war, we were on fire. Uh, Conquistador came right back. Even things up again. 11 v 11s were, were getting in there kind of uh, both, you know, good base building on both sides really made it uh, difficult. You're going to see sort of uh, Don Juan there coming right back at us, doing a little bit of cleanup, gets a 11 v 11 uh, against us and then does a bully. They did have to use quite a few, uh, um, a few extra bullies, like quite a few bullies, a few extra bullies than us. Uh, but again, kept it close the entire time. You're going to see our 11s jump in here, 11 v 11, 11 v 11, and then a couple cleanups for us. Really nice job. They did a little uh, 12v11 there, and that was sort of the end of the war. You're going to see this last uh, hour of the war. We had Damien go in and have a bully fail, which is obviously very uncharacteristic of us, but against those 11s, it's going to happen. So that put us, this attack right here kind of made us be like, oh, shit, uh, this is going to be close. And we had to be very careful of where we hit because we figured we knew it was coming down a percentage unless we unless we nailed the 12v12. Uh, we only had the one star on their number one. So our we knew we were going to have to hit this number one regardless. So Predator went in near miss with the 95%. Pred has been just lights out for us for the for CWL so far. Uh, has had at least one 12v12. Uh, for the first two weeks, so near miss for Predator is a little kind of heartbreaking. Um, I know, I know he was he was pumped because he he was sure he was going to nail it. Just misses there, so then that put us in a position where we just had to wait. We had to wait for the last minute to sort of see what happened. If their one, because they had the same uh, same situation, um, we only had the one star on our number one. So if they had nailed that twelve v twelve it was game over for us. It wouldn't have really mattered uh, what we did at that point. Uh, so as soon as that happened, we went for the best percentage possible. Predator nailing the bully at the end, gave us the 98% destruction, gave us the victory. Awesome job. 2.0 improves to 3-0 on the season. I am pumped. So lots of attacks. Fortunately, no 12v12 is this war. Um, you know, uh, I, I will always, always show those. So that's, un that's unfortunate. But uh, I do have quite a few attacks. Like you're going to see our 10s just were lit. 
and it was unbelievable at the beginning of the war. I really wish I could have streamed this one, but should be good to go for next Friday. I'm only working until 5 o'clock next Friday, and that's basically when the war starts. So I'm hoping to get an early start on the stream, um, and we'll kind of see how that goes. But we're going to jump in right here. Number 20, Kinger going in. Now, I like this attack because King himself will tell you how ugly this attack was. But against these lower tier Town Hall 10s, I cannot stress enough from what I see. Just stick with the plan. I think he was trying to get the bowler bounce on that air defense. Didn't quite get it. At least get some damage done to it. Um, so if that was unfortunate. That was the first one. Pulls this baby D out. This baby D does work. See, he has the poison spell. Um, and you're going to sort of see he does get the Inferno Tower here. Nice rage. Gets pretty decent value. I think he did want that sweeper to go down. But does not go down. So pretty decent value there. Sends in his suicide heroes. Uh, but you're going to see this baby D just laying waste to tons of these balloons. And he's really, he still has 20 in the bag with uh, two Lava Hounds. So that's looking good. Really, you know, wants this air defense to go down. The Suicide Heroes looking good at this point. Gets the king to go up there. You're going to see the queen here in a minute. Has to use her ability to take care of her baby dragon. Poison goes down. Hits the ability. Takes care of the baby D. Takes care of that Tesla. But that's about all she gets out of the deal, I believe. And does have a good chunk of the base, 34%. And you're going to see that sort of, it's just that one side of the base he's got to take care of with the two hounds and 20 balloons. So the good balloon placement sort of saves the day here. He's got loons right in on that Inferno Tower. That goes down. Things looking good. There's only one air defense left here. A couple wizard towers. Now the problem here is the queen. And this is the next blunder of the attack. He's about to drop the Skelly spell and drops it in this compartment as the Queen hops over the wall. I don't know how many fucking times I've done that. It's just unbelievable. So the Skelly spell is sitting there. It's at least distracting the Queen, uh, but does not kill the Queen. So he's got all these balloons still working, going to this final Archer Tower. He's got pups and some minions working on the rest of the base. So not a very pretty attack. It was a little bit of a fast forward. Look how far this Queen runs over to start killing some of these balloons. Only a few balloons left. But you're going to see, still has the haste spell in the bag. The queen takes out the pups. Haste spell the haste on top of the queen. Takes care of the face by the skin of his teeth. Good job, King. Way to pull through with this one. Uh, I know that wasn't the cleanest attack, but uh, you stuck to it and uh, got her done. Nice job. So moving on up, we got Waves. I think this was the first attack of the war. Uh, Neon is uh, the bitch queen. There might be a joke in there somewhere, but... <laughs> We'll just leave it at that. Uh, she is going to go ahead, drop a couple archers, take care of those huts. You never want those huts on the uh, left up, right? That's that's always the killer. How many of us have been like, oh, I got this, I got this. And then you look in the corner of the map, you're like, oh, no, the hut. And you miss. But anyway, so basically just gets the, the uh, witches on either side. Healers down. Uh, pretty decent protection for them. Gets the, uh, uh, the wall wrecker in there. Raid spell goes down. Rage up some of those uh, bowlers. Rage up the queen. Rage up everything. Hound is going to hold the queen up for a little bit here, but those bowlers are going to push on through. She does have quite a few bowlers walk over here with the witches, which isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as they're protected. But with the both healers still up, no air defenses now on this side to take care of the healers. This little little piece here down at like 4 o'clock right now is going to do serious work, even though that Inferno's there. Finally, the uh, the Lava Hound in the CC is getting cleaned up. Still has that King ability intact. Finally, that uh, Wall Record goes down as well, and uh, Bowlers pop out and taking care of business. Just got to get everything into this jump spell now. It has access to pretty much all the remaining defenses. The only thing that's going to be an issue is this Expo that's up over there, and you're going to see how that gets taken care of. I think the Queen walks to this little corner here and takes care of it. Absolutely does. And as you can see, with the healers still up, the bowlers, the witches, this base is done for. Neon waves. Looking good, girl. Pretty good attacker, too. Oh, zing. Yeah, I'm full of it today. All right. So, Tanu, co-leader going in. Loving it. Uh, goes ahead and sends a uh, pretty decent value uh, blimp here. Uh, does take care of a, a bomb with that uh, one uh, balloon. And the CC comes out. And you're going to see, again, the baby D in the CC. Um, I think they were expecting a lot of um, Lalo for us. Because they really like to run these baby D uh, CCs. Um, is what it is, right? You're going to see, again, 
does damage, right? If uh, if that if that was um, Hound Hound Loon CC, uh, that value that blimp would have got a lot more value. But is what it is. Sends the Suicide Heroes along with that baby D up at the Town Hall. Goal here is to take care of the defensive Archer Queen. Does have that Skelly spell backup uh, just in case, I believe. I always find it handy to have that Skelly spell because even on bases where I've Got taken care of. You're going to see. He takes care of the defensive queen here. Just hits that ability just in time. Um, but even on bases where you think you're going to get the defensive queen, I still like to have that Skelly Skell backup because sometimes there's this one like lone air defense left up and you got balloons moving in from the one side. If you drop that Skelly Spell in time, a few times I, the Skelly Spell has taken care of that air defense once a lot of the def other defenses in the base are taken care of. So I like that. So there's a ton of spells. Two haste, a rage, a heal, plus the Skelly Spell working in. Ray, uh, uh, sorry, Haste is going to go in. Just really wants to start working the balloons clockwise around the base here. Got to take care of this air defense. Hound finally bursts on that, and you're going to see right here. Boom. Drops the uh, drops the Skelly spell right here. Now, is in range of this Wizard Tower, so it's it, but it's just distracting the defenses, right? Let's the balloons move in on top of the Inferno Tower. Let's come in from behind the Sweeper, which is nice. Rage over top the air defense and both those Wizard Towers, and they go down instantly. And this base is done for. It's only the Cannon and the Bomb Tower. Pops all over the place. Tanu coming in like a boss, knocking it down. Side note too, I'm working on getting a new headset. I know the mic is not the greatest quality. This was a really good headset when I got it. I've had problems from day one and I spent the money on it. I got it on Amazon. I didn't want to return it. I was trying to work with it and I just finally is. I've had it for quite a while now, but um, especially for recording, it is not the best. Um, I've gone over this in a year ago in my videos how the room that I do my videos in has um, a hard floor. It's very echoey, so it's really difficult um, to get great quality. But I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm working on at least by Christmas uh, getting a new, uh, a new headset. I just can't afford it at the moment, which I'm sure we're all in that situation. Let's check out King Six Pack here. I remember why I watched this attack live while I was at work. So. It still bugs me while I'm at work and I'm watching all these hits. I'm like, oh my God, I could be streaming right now and all this would be live and go nuts. But anyways, you can see huge value on this uh, nine o'clock compartment blimp. <laughs> Gets the air defenses, the inferno. He moves on over here. You're going to see down goes the cannon, down goes the mortar. See you later. Might even get this other mortar out of the deal. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine defenses he gets out of that uh, blimp really nice plus a cc pull goes ahead and gets a poison down over top lets the king get in there do some tanking for the queen while the queen works on that baby d down goes the baby d down goes the witch in a second here which doesn't quite get the poison but no big deal queen's gonna finish it off and then step up take care of the air defense and take care of that defensive cc at the same time just waits just in time to take care of the defense queen down she goes he does not have a Skelly spell, so if that Queen had stayed up, that would have been uh, possibly disastrous for this attack. So really nice opening execution by King. It was just phenomenal. I remember I was talking in chat. I'm like, well, <laughs> that started well because that was absolutely perfect. Goes ahead, sends the Hound in on the 3 o'clock air defense. And you're going to see only one air defense remains for the Hounds and the Balloons. So he's going to go ahead and get the haste going. Get basically all those balloons in. Yeah, now they're all in. A couple on each of these defenses. He just wants to sort of close everything in on this danger compartment. You see the double expo there with the two archer towers on the back end and the wizard tower in between the sweepers. That's a nice uh, job. I'm going to start looking to build that uh, type of compartment. A sweeper on either side with the wizard tower in the middle. Um, really, really uh, creative and really just deadly to these Lalo attacks, but Kinger's got way too much in there. Finally, that heal spell goes down. Could have maybe got it down a touch earlier, but other than that, no way you can critique this attack. It was absolutely beautiful. King walking away with a just gorgeous three-star in this one. Tash is done. Boom. Three in the bag. Alrighty, so that was 17. So there's one of our bullies there. And we got Erickson. Uh, Eric's, Eric just got promoted to Elder in the clan. And uh, rightfully so. The guy is super active. Uh, really focuses on attack strategies. He's been teaching me this Ice Witch. 
<coughs> teach me the bait type base, different base types to uh, um, try and help me get back up to speed on everything. Um, just a really good overall uh, overall attacker and honestly just just great climbing because he is super involved uh, posting attack strategies all the time and it shows in his attacks because he just absolutely rips it here. King does go for a little walk here. I don't think he had planned that. I think he wanted the king in there, but it doesn't really matter. Goes ahead. He's protecting the wall wrecker with those freezes. Now, I believe the wall wrecker gets taken down a touch earlier. I think he wanted to open up this wall to get some length um, to be able to let the troops move in through there. But it doesn't really matter. Bowlers come out. So as soon as the wall wrecker goes down, you got to get the rage down. You got to get the heal down. Protect those bowlers in your wall wrecker. That is the purpose of this attack. But, um, I know for sure he wanted to get the wall wrecker a little bit deeper. He wanted bowler bounces going into this compartment down here. Wanted this wizard tower on the back end to get taken down, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Giant's going to go in there, do a little tanking. The healers lock onto the king, which bring him back up, and he still has his ability intact. So that was a huge thing, too. Uh, so now he's going to all he really has left in the core is this king and queen, but the queen has access to these two things, which is really important. Only problem is going to be this inferno tower, but he's going to hit the ability early on as king. Freeze goes down on the inferno tower just in time. He still has one more freeze to go, but the queen's going to step up, take care of business, but goes ahead. His freeze placements are on point as well, really stretching them between the two defenses. That's really important as well. You want to get the value on those freezes. You're bringing seven of them. So if you can time them properly and stretch them out properly between the defenses, then you're going to get crazy value in that. and pieces of the base are just going to be frozen the whole time while, you, while your witches and while your bowlers and kill squad move to the base and you're going to see not much left to go witches all over the place still a few dealers going cannon is the only thing to remain and down it goes Erickson with the three in the bag nice job buddy bam okie doke so 14 Tanu with his six pack Nice job. Okay, so I see this base, very common. Um, have these all basically in a row on the back side of one part of the base. So you can see air defenses on one side and all the, oh, excuse me, all the wizard towers on the other side. So you basically left with the choice. Now it's interesting Tanu decides to air this because none of these defenses are, tar none of these air defenses rather are targetable by the suicide heroes you're gonna see his heroes do go walk a bit even though he wanted the queen to step up and take care of maybe both of this so she does now but she's taken quite a bit of damage she's gonna have to hit that ability here in a moment there it goes and she gets in just in time i believe to take care of oh maybe not maybe not no down she goes so she i he did for sure i know want to get that air defense so he sort of adjusts and says you know what here we go in goes a lava hound. We're going to drop six balloons with each of them. Get them in on either side. Really gets good stretch and focuses more on this side because really the, the suicide heroes took out a lot of defenses. He wants them going on counterclockwise to sort of move around this like dead zone X in the middle that really helps create good pathing. Goes against a rage spell down, drops the double skelly. So that's going to take care of the queen, no problem. Double skelly. See you later, archer queen. And gets a haste spell down, still has three hastes. And his blimp. So he's going to get the blimp on the back end, start targeting towards the uh, the Inferno Tower. It's going to pop. Going to get the haste spell down over top. Let those max loons do serious work. Gets the heal down in that middle of those uh, those wizard towers. The little wizard tower farm there. Still has an unburst hound. It's kind of unfortunate. He did sort of want the hound to burst at one point here, but it's just far too many balloons for the base. Still has an archer to sort of drop and do some cleanup, and there's just really uh, structures to take care of now at this point. Good read on the base, Tanu, and nice, sexy tree. Four more weeks to go. I can take this stupid thing off. Alrighty. What's next? What was that? 14 and 13. Neon with her six pack. Again, with the bitch. Five healers on this one. Um, surprised I'm not 100%, I think. Um, was an interesting choice for that extra healer, less witches, more bowlers. Uh, I'm don't I'm not familiar enough with the attack to know why those adjustments are being made. Um, I just notice them all the time. I know whenever she does a bitch attack, it's not like she gets this standard cookie cutter bitch army. It's always adjusted to the base. You can see only one healer with the witches, and then four healers with the queen. So she really wants to. I, I know. 
she recognized that the queen, as she pushes the queen down and around, sorry, the, uh, around the nine o'clock towards six, the queen's going to be safe. The queen's going to be doing cleanup and, and taking out defenses and working her way down here free of charge, right? There's no air defenses to worry about taking care of, taking out our healers. There's not that many defenses, period, down here. And the polar's even got a good bounce. Take care of that expo in there. So the queen's going to get good value. All the bowlers going to the core. Heel spell goes down. Good jump spell there. Witch is even in there helping out. Everything under the heel. Taking care of that little compartment with the Inferno. Doesn't want to get a good bounce. Now, under the raise, the bowlers and king take care of the, uh, the wall very, very quickly. So nice job. Bowlers are going to get good bounces and all this stuff. Witches are doing work on just these uh, sort of random few defenses up here. The mortar is doing work to these skellies, but the witches finally move in on it. And you're going to see this queen... Uh, the bottom, moving in, untouched, is going to end up taking care of the rest of base, along with the king. A couple more witches. Base didn't stand a chance. Good read, Neon. Sex a six pack. All right, 13, we're going up to 10 now. A few bullies in between. Good old Notorious. Just rip this base. So another um, similar style of base I was just talking about, right? You got the, the line of air defenses on one side of the base, and you got the sort of, I mean, a little more spread out than that last base, but you got the wizard tower farm going on the other side. Um, you're going to see the blimp come in, which is an interesting choice. A blimp with hogs. I thought that was kind of kind of neat. And basically just rain belts down on that compartment. Uh, unfortunately, that baby D does not quite go down. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You're going to see the archer pull everything out to the town hall over here with the goblin. Goes ahead and drops the king to do a little bit of tanking. <clears throat> so it was basically that blimp was going to take care of this 12 o'clock compartment. Now, the, the, ar the I don't think he wanted the archer tower to stay up because he basically just wanted this bottom half of the base taken care of. But the main thing was the defensive queen went down. He's going to go ahead and send these suicide heroes in. They're going to do work, finish off the clan castle, take care of some of those wizard towers and the defensive king, which is obviously important as well. So the defensive king can really wreck some hog raids. And once that king goes down, she's going to hit the ability, take care of the wizard tower, take care of that expo. And that's about all she wrote, I believe. And in come the hogs. Come and start and just a few hogs to take care of that archer tower, but everything else is now just going to move straight across into the X and then straight back up. So with four heels, you're going to see that covers one, two, three, and four will cover almost the whole base. Not quite. So as long as it doesn't hit some very unlucky spring traps, this raid is looking good at this point. Got to work through this expo, taking a little bit. Down goes the expo. All the hogs staying in a nice clump. One more heel over top that bomb tower. There she is. Isn't going to touch them. Still has a heel and a skelly spell. I believe he uses the skelly maybe for cleanup because <laughs> it's got so much here. You know, go ahead and drop that heel at 9 o'clock. There it is. <laughs> there goes the skelly just to help out. I think it, oh, there goes the bomb. But it doesn't matter. The heel's down and does not touch that huge pack of probably like 20 hogs still. Only a couple defenses remain. Notorious absolutely smashes this. I sort of, um, that was a go ho, go ho was like when I came back was sort of the first week I was trying playing around with it and got some success with it but I, I don't know I swear uh, it's funny me and King were talking or he was talking and he's like yeah I'm a spring track magnet magnet and I'm like I know I swear to god like when I send in my hogs I don't know what it is it looks, maybe it's my angle or I just am unlucky because I will nail every spring trap along the way and I lose freaking I, I lose my hogs to spring traps it's just a sad story uh, so anyways, nice job, Notorious, very sexy. So Mix is going in on number nine here. Mix is, has a great success rate. And uh, going in on this interesting base. I like this base style. It's kind of separated into four different compartments. You have the air defenses here. Wizard tires spread out on the on the opposite side. Very well protected Inferno tires. Can't really charge in and take care of that. So Mix it just decides to straight up ice witch this thing. It's gonna go ahead and get the war, uh, the sorry, the wall wrecker. God, it's gonna take me a while to get that right. Gets the wall wrecker going in right towards this town hall, right towards the, the queen compartment. Out comes the clan castle. Nice little freezes. Really wants to use those early freezes to make sure the wall wrecker gets at least to this wall and opens up this alleyway going through the middle of the base. And you're going to see, I think it makes it just in time. One more shot. There it is. Things open up. 
and boom, down it goes. Goes ahead and freezes that back end. Out come the bowler, so down goes the rage, down goes the heel. Exactly what I'm saying. This ice switch attack, so imperative that you protect the wall record, get it as deep into the base as you can, and then as soon as it breaks, you got to rage the bowlers, got to heal the bowlers. They need value. If you don't get value out of that, your attack is not looking good. Queen's going to bust on through into this bottom compartment. I think it would have been nice if he could have got the wall record there, but not a big deal. This expo sort of cannon chamber is the only thing I'm worried because the Queen's going to take care of these defenses. Got the witches with healers working on the outside here. So it's only a matter of time. And one freeze spell is pretty much going to cover all four of those things right there. Don't even think he needs it. But does he even use it? Does he swag? There it is. Yeah. No big deal for Mixa. Down she goes. Three in the bag. Nice job, my friend. Bam. Number nine. So we got nine, eight, seven, six, five. So basically all of them now. Notorious completing his sixer here on this base. Another uh, hog attack. This time he's bringing a golem. A uh, little bit different style here. Has a poison, has a has a skelly. Goes in, gets the wizard down on the outside, starts creating his funnel. Golem in to do some tanking. Let the king beat on it. Those cannons beat on it. Preserve his heroes. This is like standard issue, like old school Town Hall 9, Goho entry. Love it. Cold-blooded style. Funnel it in. Out comes the clan castle. Down goes the poison. Standard stuff. He's going to take care of the CC and then take care of that defensive Archer Queen. Rage goes down. Bam, bam, bam. King goes in. See you later, Queen. His Queen is going to follow in and start working on these defenses like a boss. These very sort of long, I like the decision for the entry. He uses these sort of long compartments to kind of hollow out, sort of carve out the center of that base and create, again, if you're creating a U shape or you're creating a V shape with your kill squad, Loons and hogs are uh, just have perfect path that you can predict it. They're going to stay clumped together, and you're going to be able to heal them. You're going to be able to rage them. You're going to be able to do whatever you want. You just know where they're going to go. You're going to sort of see a few more sort of reinforcements come in from the 10 o'clock spot there. Bomb does go down. I don't think you saw that, but it doesn't really matter. Heal's going to go down. As long as that wizard tower goes down, everything's going to stay alive. Lose a few to a spring trap there. Really, this inferno is going to be a bit of an issue, but don't think there's just, there's just way too many hogs right at this point to take care of. These two random Teslas on the outside there uh, aren't going to stand a chance once these hogs work through this stuff. Down goes the Inferno. Down goes the Cannon. Do a little bit of a fast forward. Notorious hangs onto this one. Has cleanup troops at 12. Little wizard here doing cleanup. Goblins on that side. Way too many hogs going in against these uh, Teslas. The bomb does almost thwart thwart it and uh unfortunately fortunately for notorious just pulls through i think there's five six hogs there doing cleanup and goes ahead and drops the skelly spell for cleanup that's the other thing too like a skelly spell is so handy for whatever you need right it can distract defenses it can help take out the archer queen it can help it can it can help for cleanup right so uh really nice job there really nice uh sort of on the fly decision making by notorious good job buddy Demon, our lowest tier Town Hall 10 going in and doing work against like one of their highest tier Town Hall 10s. Very nice. Number 20 versus number 7. So that's always uh, always a positive. I mean, obviously, 39, 40 heroes. Um, you can see got using the using the book to make sure he's got his uh, max max troops there. Did sort of figure that out. Um, <laughs> honestly, I still feel like such a noob with this game. It's hilarious. There's so many little pieces that I'm just like. What the hell is that? Anyhow, going to go ahead and pulls out the uh, the mine. But the mine hits his healer. He didn't want that to happen. He wanted it to hit the balloon. But it doesn't really matter. Going to go ahead and rage up that queen. She is going to take care of that cannon. Take care of the def uh, defensive king. Down it goes. Now, if you look, he only has one Lava Hound and has a wall record, not a blimp. So really going to try and get some serious value from this walk. And his king kind of taking care of the little Teslas there up at nine or three o'clock, sorry. And in goes the wall record to let the queen in and do some work. Again, carving out basically from six and into the core a little bit. Just wants to sort of carve out that piece. And he's going to go ahead and just bring in the balloons and sort of just 
wreck the top of this base. See how this works. Out comes the clan castle, down goes the freeze. Freeze and poison combo is really nice as well. Holds everything in place, gets the poison working, so it's standing there for a minute. Really slows him down. You see the Valks go in out of the wall record, just smash that queen in like two shots. You see the loons come in out of the, the you know, the queens are going to work on that air defense. Perfect. And the uh, only one air defense remains for that one Lava Hound, which is really nice. <clears> he <throat> spells going down, getting everything in. Lava Hound burst maybe a little bit earlier than he wanted, but no big deal. He's got enough haste, enough balloons going to work into this top compartment. Still has one more haste, and there's only a few uh, defenses remaining at the 12 o'clock compartment now. Queen's still in there doing work. Her still has a healer on her and the ability intact. So absolutely crushes this base. Down goes the expo, finally, and has so much cleanup. Still has a Valk in there. Tons of stuff. Queen ability gets hit. Just to burst through that wall, make sure he takes down the base in time. But good old demon going in and getting her done. Nice treat in the bag for number 20. Beautiful. So I believe we're getting into 11 v 11 territory now. So my man, Warble, uh, really crushing it 11 v 11. I think he had a, a, I think he had a six or I think I showed that, but we will find out in a moment. Uh, so you're going to see uh, their lower uh, lower tier Town Hall 11. Um, you know, only the one Expo there, Inferno Towers, the lower level Eagle. Yeah, so a pretty low tier, right? So it was really nice for uh, Warp to be able to make sure he, he gets this done. You want to make sure you 11 v 11 these when you have to send a 12 down to, to take care of the lower tier Town Hall 11s. Never a good thing. So Warp makes sure he gets it done here. Warden down, kill squad in. Few balloons in from 12 o'clock. I thought that was kind of an interesting choice. Um, really just want to make sure that 12 o'clock gets taken care of so all of this stuff goes into the core. Wants to get the eagle, wants to make sure air defense goes down, clan castle goes down. Basically, as much of this chunky part of those three sort of long compartments, wants to make sure it goes down. Warden's in there, hits that ability, keeps the wall record going, opens things up. Rage spell goes down for the queen. Archer Queen is doing some serious work there with the help of that Warden. Still has the wall record doing work. He's going to let it go down now to this Inferno. In fact, he hits it. He bursts it on purpose. So, unfortunately, he bursts it right on top of that bomb. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Grand Warden was in there doing a little bit of little bit of help as well. Everything's sort of keeping going. Still has those bowlers up. Down goes the Inferno. Only these two air defenses on the backside. And perfect, like, really... There's only one spot for his balloons to go at this point. Tons of air skellies come out, but it, it doesn't matter. The uh, Max Lava Hound there finally burst, but doesn't matter. Just too many balloons. There's one splash on the back end, but he's got the haste spell to make sure it gets over top quickly. Down it goes, or not. Swags the haste spell, <laughs> may as well. He's got 18,000 balloons, still has the warden up, still has his queen up. Looking good at this point. Just got to get that defensive king out of the way. And War Belian with the three in the bag. Beautiful, my friend. All right. Yep. Did have a six pack. So going in on their number five. Little bit higher tier of Town Hall 11. Uh, has most all of his expos done. I uh, think that's the next level eagle there. Um, so yeah, definitely a little more structurally sound, Town Hall 11. Uh, gonna go ahead and get the bowler bounce in on these two buildings, gets the golem in, wants to create his funnel, couple wizards down to help out, uses the king on the other side, just gonna walk the king just into this compartment, um, or was hoping so, I thought, I think he was gonna, yeah, there it goes, uh, king's gonna walk sort of into this alleyway, just take care of a lot of this stuff, queen is gonna go in, out comes the clan castle, so down goes the poison to help things out, now, I don't know if you wanted it to come out at that exact moment, um, but you're going to see here it ends up working out anyways. This queen's going to just take care of this stuff here. It's going to move down to this cannon, take care of that. Um, the, the poison and the grand warden and that wizard end up taking care of business on that baby dragon. The clan castle is taken care of. Queen's still doing work. It's got two lava hounds, six hastes, 23 balloons with a heal spell. Basically for, again, this V shape. On the side of the base. I uh, believe he's going to start up at the uh, 10 o'clock. There it is. Two haste down. Hound goes in. Things are looking good. <clears throat> and away we go. There's only one linear path going basically from 12 o'clock straight down to 9 o'clock, straight down to 6 o'clock. Nothing is going to stop this attack at this point. Uh, 
pace all over the place. Still has that fresh hound in there. Does eat a mine to the face, so it's, but it's going to buy just enough time. Let all these balloons close in under the haste. Down goes the air defense. Down goes the wizard tower. Heal spell over the Inferno Expo and especially Wizard Tower Compartment. Does not stand a chance. See you later, base. Absolutely crushed it. War, nice job. Oh, the 6 o'clock Tesla as well, which I don't have on my screen. It's weird, the resolution. I, I've been looking to see if I can change it to make it a little more, just a little more compact, but uh, either way, it doesn't really matter. Tree in the bag for War, nice 11v11 sixer. So there's one of our bullies. Uh, we did get this 99% 11 v 11. Very unfortunate for Lay. It was a sexy attack. And the real kicker was we had Damien copy that 99% with his Town Hall 12, and he got less percent. Uh, again, no, no disrespect to Damien, but it was, it was, it, that sucked because like we were, we all thought we were like, oh yeah, for sure, you know, he's got this in the bag. And that's how it goes sometimes, you know. I remember talking back in the day. A lot of times, I don't even, even if it's a 99%, when you're sort of forcing yourself to try and copy an attack, I feel there's more pressure and then it's it's not your attack. You're not naturally doing it. So you're trying to copy things and sometimes it just leaves more room for error for some reason. Maybe I'm crazy, but it's what it is. So uh, the 99% though was sort of key because we got the 99 on that base um, and then ended up having good percentage uh, from a Town Hall 10 versus 12. Uh, Dan coming through with a really nice 58% on their Town Hall 12, which is always clutch, leaves it set, leaves it uh, so you don't necessarily have to hit it unless you have those extra Town Hall 12 attacks. And then Predator with that 95% was really the clutch hit there. Because uh, you're going to see where the percentage loss was for them was on their 11, they only had the 85% on Warp there, and they had uh, 75 and 73. So our 95 and 50 sort of balanced, like you think about how that works, they're both, if you average it out, it was both up about 75%. So really that Town Hall 11, the 99%, I think was the, was the major difference of the war. Anyways, 2.0. Coming out the gates, 3-0. I love it. Uh, we have like a three-week break. No one could really answer that. Oh, maybe it's not. That's, that's coming up. But uh, we, there, it is a bye week next week. They're doing some sort of event. I don't really know. No one could really give me an answer on why we don't have it next week, um, which sucks because, like I was saying, I have uh, Friday off. And for some reason, I was talking about that Friday off. And I totally forgot it's a bye week next week, but now I remember. So uh, no CWL next week, which is unfortunate. We will still be warring, though. So I still think I'm going to try and jump on stream, really trying to get the content going. Uh, what I like about the content creation at this point in the game with me, because I'm doing so much learning, is – I. I'm watching every attack, watching these details, watching everything, and it's it's just helping me learn, right? Because I'm, I'm really fine. I'm going through things with a fine-tooth comb rather than just friendly challenging 24-7. Um, so is what it is. We should be back in two weeks for CWL, but um, other than that, hopefully I will see you guys this week. Maybe we'll get a few really good random matchups, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So till next time, guys, that'll do it here for your wisdom from Wiser. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.